All right, so we come from the Burdekin area and now we sort of pushed up into the northern side and fishing the Inchinbrook Channel. Beautiful place. Um, it's a lot bigger area compared to the Burdekin area. Yep. Yes. Smoke this. Well That's... done then. We've come from behind the fall, we yeah. know what to do. <laughs> but uh, a bit different here in the salt. This is Johnny's country, he knows yeah. it's like the back of his hands, but um, everyone can be beat. Yeah. The lead's always good, but I've lost with the lead plenty of times, so... Yeah, you know. so hopefully we can sort of hold it out and put the points on the board and try and come away with a win overall. Anglers, three, two... Do it. Good luck, boys. Good Yeah, last year across the pond, they beat us on the first day, so we had to get the biggest bag and biggest fish on the second day. We ended up doing that right at the end. We'll have to do it here again today, so hopefully we can um, go out there and smash them. With the incoming tide, there was an area that we wanted to fish for some bigger ones. We knew we need a really big fish to kick it off, pretty much. We sort of idled through and scanned a few fish, and we knew they were in the area. Had a few casts, and I had one a little bit wider than normal, and I was sort of hopping the soft plastic on the bottom, and felt a really light tap and um, I set the hook and lucky I did. You want? Yeah. Oh, go on. This thing come up and boiled and we saw it was a good quality fish. So I was sort of freaking out a bit. This was the first fish and um, it was a big one. So we played it out for a while. She plays it for a while, it's all on light spin gear. Yeah. Yep, because of the water and the colour of the water and that, we're pulling light trying to get the bite. It was a fit fish and eventually got it to net. Yes. All right. That's the start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good that's one, a too. Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Lifting into the boat, you could tell it was a good fish. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We're high fiving when we got it straight on the deck, so it's beauty. That's why you come to Hinchy. We haven't been fishing probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> We had a game plan to catch some bigger fish from the start to try and um, ease the bag into some nice fish so we didn't have to worry too much down the track. But we pushed into an area and we ended up drifting up a little creek and I cast it over to one sort of side of the bank and got a bite. Yep. So we pulled it and put the net and put him in. First one, scorer. It was a nice one in the bag, just sort of break the ice. It's definitely a nice little barrel. Good. Looks bearish. Does look bearish. Might be small, but boiled anyway. It's a good boil. Oh, it's Jack. Jack? Right, yeah. Really good one, too. Oh, the dots on it. Hmm. Here are the rules and points guidelines for round two of the AFC Barra series at Hinchinbrook. Target species is Barramundi. Anglers will fish a five hour limit over two sessions. Their bag will be determined by their ten longest fish. A legal fish must be caught to register a point. A bonus point will be awarded to the team that catches the longest fish. Let's do it. Let's do it? Yeah. Next spot, we're going is a... Pretty cool. It's not bad, it's a community hole, but... <laughs> so, sometimes you gotta fish around boats. <laughs> yeah, um, after we catching that decent size one, we, um... Had to wait for a tide to get up onto this mud flat where a clump of rocks was, where we seen them in like five foot of water, nice shallow one. The tide was right, slipped down there, did a skiing past it, you know, seen 10 sitting there. Yep. Work. What's that on? We've got a good one there, so that paid off going to that spot to get that one. Yeah, he's 
do Come one. On. Boom. So we had in our heads that we wanted to get a couple of big fish early. Didn't happen. We went to where we knew we'd catch numbers and we got on a flurry like we expected. But there is... <laughs> God, man. It was pretty much a fish, one after the other. Oh, my God. Big guy. See what happens? <laughs> wow. <laughs> 29, Luke. It's very, very cute, Hera. But we'll, um, we don't need him, so he's going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Luke was going good with the plastic. He was plucking away at the smaller fish, and I was getting the odd. There's one. That's a nice one, too. Nicer one on um, hard body. And that's what we expected from there. We got up near our bag and we decided, look, we've got enough fish. We're going to catch more. Let's go try upgrade. Is that eight or nine? We had a bit of a plan. We're going to slip up the car wheel and do the flats on high tide. We were going to our next spot and Griffo and myself heard a little tick going in the motor and um, straight away we knew that something was going on. We thought it dropped a cylinder or something. We knew we had a big run. We got 40k run up to the cardinal end. We had to get to this flat. Um, we knew we could get our 10 fish up there if we could get up there. Uh, about halfway up, dropped another cylinder. It got worse since we went up the channel, so we were looking at each other dreading what was going on. We knew we were struggling. We managed to get up there without breaking down along the way. Um, we got to the area, we couldn't see Team Firefly anywhere, so we were assuming we had the place for ourselves. Oh, there's Johnny. Oh, bastard. We go around a little point, and here they are, right where we wanted the fish. We've got the whole Hinchin Brook, like 50k of it, and they're within 100 metres right where we wanted the fish. That's what happens when you've got two good anglers together and have that drama all the time. So we were fishing the couple flat there and we knew the boys in Team BCF were definitely going to come down that way on that stage of the tide. They're definitely coming this way, aren't they? They want to have a chat, do you reckon? They started driving towards us. The motor didn't sound right at all. The motor doesn't sound great. You might have to fix it, Luke. Luke Katsaris from Team Firefly is an airport mechanic, so we thought he might be able to see something that we hadn't seen. So we went over there, the boys helped us out. Luke, he tried to have a look with the boats just floating, but they were waving in the wind a bit, so we found some shallow water. <laughs> yeah, Griffiths! Oh, he's getting his kit off. Craig, he's a fit man, like, <laughs> straight down to his jocks, no hesitation. He must do it all the time in front of the boys. Can you keep lunch out there, brother? <laughs> yeah, Craig was hoping there'd be a couple of backpackers driving fast or something, I think. But yeah, not, not to be. <laughs> Um, it was definitely uh, nerve-wracking standing next to Craig in his undies. It was definitely a bonding moment for both of us. We're um, really close friends now. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was hard to keep an eye on the motor. Oh, how's that, is that nice in there, Griffo, or what? Feels. Um, when we knew that we couldn't fix it, the only option we had was a boat change, if possible. So um, Craig called the uh, tournament director, Michael, and um, Matt Singh was having a fish with one of the other boys, and then he was happy enough to swap boats with us. They had to run up from the bottom end of the channel and find us, so we said, we've got to make the most of it, because we we're in prime fishing time for the flats. So we just idle where we could, use the electric, and end up smacking a few to top the bag up while we were waiting. So it worked out pretty good in that regard. Nice. Oh, good one. Keep him down. Keep him down. Craig started getting bites straight away, so I had to pretty much get going and, and get refocused. So I rolled up over a few snags and I hooked up the nice little fish. Yep. <laughs> that sort of changed the direction a bit and got us back in the game, so we were happy with that. Well done, mate. We just had to tick those little ones off and get a bit of confidence for the rest of the day. Ready? Oh, wow. That is small. <laughs> <laughs> That's just hatch. Yep. Four to go, bro. Four to go. And then we stuck one. Oh, yeah. Then we stuck another one. I think I got like four in a row, and that was pretty cool. 
This is the first for me. I know Johnny and Griffo have probably done it in the past, but um, yeah, first for me. So it, it rattled me. I was, I was just like, what the hell are we doing? I had half my gear in the boat and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, it was interesting. Bit of a stress. <laughs> Oh, so far. The other guys break down. We got a bunch of fish. We um, kind of know that they've got a couple of nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> we probably potentially have more, but we know that we need to catch some more good fish, which was our plan anyway, so it probably doesn't change our plan. As I was in the water trying to fix the motor, it was Craig, John, and Krim were up the front of the boat talking. Yep, there he is. <laughs> and I overheard Krim mention that they've got a couple of nice fish. It's a catfish. We might have taken advantage of the situation and asked how the boys are going. Um, you know, they were a bit tight lipped, but we found out they caught a couple of nice ones. Yeah, definitely needed to pull our finger out after hearing it. Uh, we didn't have a bag at that stage, and we also didn't have any nice fish, so. We weren't going to change our game plan. We knew what we were doing. We knew we could filter out them smaller fish and filter them in with bigger fish. So we basically stuck to our game and then um, it sort of started to pay off for us. Yep. That's a nice one, Ricky. Do you want me to net him? Yep. Luke was doing exactly what he was supposed to. He was getting numbers of fish and getting him in the boat easy and, you know, where he had close to a bag and confidence to move on and try to target bigger fish because, we've, you know, we've got the little ones. Let's spend some time chasing them. That concludes the first of two sessions in this barra round. The second session will commence later in the afternoon. fish spot again and sat on them for a little bit because there wasn't the numbers of fish to hold us there long enough so we left went back up the creek that we had sat there previously caught some little ones earlier in the morning we just sort of got on the electric motor and worked our way up the creek the water was getting shallow as because the tide's dropping the wind started picking up and that's what we've been waiting for all day so we headed back to Benji flats there's a lot of drains there the, the barrel like feeding in the drains when it gets to like half water height the tide all the fish start coming out of the drains, all the bait fish and the barrows start feeding. So we had one drain in the middle of Benji's we wanted to hit on this perfect tide, so we've, we've gone straight to that. We've got our 10, we've got a fair few little tiny ones, so we've just got to try to uh, work some big ones now. So we've hopefully got some areas we can get some better sized ones. We might run back and forth a bit. Yeah, I think we're doing all right here. Probably won't get the numbers now, but we're going through spots where we think we can catch legal fish which is what we'd planned. We didn't get them this morning, but we're slowly getting there. We've got two legal ones now. We'd like a bag of legal ones. With that next bank we went to, John called it. It wasn't going to be a high number, but it was definitely a spot where you could get your nice upgrades. There's one nice one. Oh, it was a 60. John cast it in and rolled a nice one. It was a mid-60 fish. Um, so it gave us confidence straight away that they're going to be there. Uh, there's a little spindly tree in the deep um, right next to the boat. So I sunk it down just off the rod tip and um, second twitch, got a bite. Yep. That's a good one, that's a good one. Oh. It's trying to pull its head around. I went a bit hard on the old reel and snapped my handle in half. It was mayhem at that point. This one. Yes! Yeah, it's awesome to have. Like, they're the ones we wanted. <laughs> Average 60 centimetres over 10 fish, it's what you're chasing. Top, top. <laughs> Slip me handle off. So that was our 10th fish. We did talk about once we get that 10 fish, we can relax. You fish differently. You go back to your sort of standard fishing, as you were just going down the creek with a mate. We had our bag, 
We've got flexibility now. We had a lot of spots that we sort of had them mapped out in a particular order to location-wise and tide times so that they flowed onto each other. Um, and now we can jump between spots and chase the legal size fish. Come on, Luke. We need them. We're in Benji Flats. It's a pretty popular area. We're running past them. I've looked at the GPS. It's where we wanted to pull up. Exact same drain. That's not good. Locally, it's got the big boat passage and small boat passage. This is a series of little waterways that connect with each other and heaps of little drains and plenty of mud. Yep, Barra. It's a haven for Barra. They're always there in that region, so you just got to find where they're feeding at that stage of the tide. All right. Should be enough, He's right? Uh, Angel Rings is another sort of a rocky point in the main channel area. Um, it always cops a lot of wind, current. You need that for barra fishing. Um, with the rock, they hide in there, and there's always fish there. There's one. Net? Yeah, it's probably a, maybe an upgrade. It's an upgrade. Yeah. It's an upgrade, but it's not the upgrade we want. That one's not an upgrade. Is it leaking? That's definitely small. Uh, the Seymour River is just north of where the Herbert comes out. It's got some big sandy flats at the front. Um, it's also some big snaggy banks, which we love for the barrows. So um, there's some deep water there and they hold some good fish. Oh, you see the pipe? Yep. Got him? Is it, I don't think it's a barrow. Is it Trevor, is it? Runner. Yeah. Runner. It's a flathead. Rocky. Cord. Come on, oh, Piranha. Piranha. Still kidding me. Yep. Oh, I don't know if it's a barrel, but... That's a jack, I think. Yeah. So, it doesn't look like a barrel. We're getting all the stuff we don't want. You do. That's a good jack. Oh, coming up the channel. Rock Island, which is towards the southern end of Hinchinbrook Channel. It's this island that just comes straight out of the middle of the channel, out of deep water, and um, it's an ideal fishing location. Oh, there's one. We went up the top of a little creek, a spot where I've had a lot of success before, and boom, the fish had it down deep. There's was a bit of nerves because we could tell it was a 60. Josh Pullins is always unbelievable. He's a great fisherman, especially in this area. He's done a lot up here. And won a lot of comps up here, so always fishing with him too. You always got a bit of confidence knowing that what's going to come next is going to work for you. No, it definitely helps having a partner like that. They're the ones we want, we need more of them. Yes! Woo. My name is John Schmidt. For years, I've ferried people to the island. When you first arrive, it's like stepping back to the Jurassic period. You feel like the first person to walk its shores, discover the waterfalls, and swim in its rainforest plunge pools, where one of the world's truly great coastal walking trails meanders through rainforests and scales rugged peaks. There is literally nowhere on earth like Hinchinbrook Island. This would have to be the prettiest place in Australia to fish. Hinchinbrook Island, I'm sure Jurassic Park was filmed there. It's, you look up, you see all the clouds coming off the top of it, and it's like that every day you come up here. I love Hinchinbrook. It's actually my favourite place to fish. You've got the mountains coming right down to the waterline in a saltwater environment. It's, there isn't anywhere like it. We are currently on the mainland side of Hinchinbrook Channel. I'm in a creek around the boat passageway. Probably the six, maybe seven spot today. Um, just a small little creek with plenty of sticks and stuff in the water on the dropping tide. So as the water drops, less and less stays in the water. So technically, the fish should be more uh, concentrated onto your areas, so it's a little bit easier to target. There's one. John hooked an ice one. It's just hooked, man. Just hooked, yes. It jumped first and had one hook in it, and I did call it's not hooked well. Straight away I went into panic mode, and as soon as it was next to the boat, I was going to swipe it. Luke went a little bit early on the net shot. I swiped at it, and I hooked the hook on the lure, and not the fish. Luke, <laughs> That 
was horrible. I don't usually blow up when I lose a fish, but I did in the moment. This is probably the worst moment in my um, tournament fishing career. I knew it was an important fish. It was definitely over 60, up into the mid-60s, and they're the ones you don't want to blow. But, you know, we're over it now. These things happen. John Millard is the best fisherman in the Hindrabrook region. There's one. So we've fished against him for a number of years and um, he's pretty much impossible to beat in this area. His knowledge is insane. Yep. We were stressing a little bit, I think, by that time. We didn't have any quality in our bag. So um, it's going to be a big job for us. Yep. Next time on AFC, it's the thrilling conclusion to the AFC Barra Series. That's one. Okay. Will Team Firefly hold on for the victory or can BCF pull them back? Yes! <laughs> oh, I am good that. Also, see the return of the AFC Footy Series with NRL legend Matt Singh taking on the young and talented Ben Hampton. Oh, uh, yep.